looking at, again, discussing LGA formula changes. The bonding bill, really pushing for a large bonding bill is going to be a, a major focus. Um, we'll vote on the exact amount, but like I said, we're going to be pushing for a big PFA package, money for child care, uh, BDPI, um, and so forth. I don't know yet what we're going to, I'm going to, one of the things that wasn't on any of our slides, but I do want to mention because sort of as we speak right down in Austin, a number of my colleagues are actually hosting a discussion on housing down in Austin, Minnesota. We're going to be doing something similar on Friday. If any of you are available to go over to Fergus Falls, um, I'll make sure Don has the details if anyone's interested on that. But we are also looking at whether we need to do something on housing. Um, but uh, we hope for, you know, we'd really like a comprehensive transportation package, but I'm not going to try and kid you. We're not going to have a comprehensive solution next year. What we will likely see is money in the bonding bill for transportation if we see any transportation money. But we will long term continue to push on that. It is an election year that will impact what people do. It also means that we will be continue to educate candidates and the public on our issues. So. We're starting to work now to bring, uh, you know, and prepare for a successful session. A couple of events coming up. Um, our fall conference is uh, about two months away in Alexandria. If any of you can make it, it is a really great event. Um, it's, it's, every year it's been more and more well attended. We'll be talking about, you know, what we're going to be doing this session as well as we've got, you know, special, uh, we're, we're going to have our, um, the commissioner of the MPCA is going to come to our luncheon. She'll be the keynote luncheon address. I think the first time we've had a P MPCA commissioner, number of other speakers, a legislative panel on environmental issues. We'll be talking about child care. We'll be talking about housing. A lot of issues that matter to our members. Then in March, this is our most well-attended event, is our legislative day. And if you can come down for any day to this session, that's a great one to do it. And we promise you it's not going to be 30 below in March, at least we hope, <laughs> like it was this past January. <laughs> and then our summer conference is down in Red Wing. If you've never spent time in Red Wing, it's a gorgeous city, like many of our cities. But it's down along the Mississippi if you want to check that out. Um, big thank you, and like I said, um, really, the, the way we're able to get things done is because we have such a vast you know, membership from across the state, active members who help us engage with their legislators, who really help us drive home you know, the importance of um, the things we're working on. So thank you to Pelican Rapids for being an active member. I, you know, we see your mayor, we hear from Don quite a bit. It really helps get what we need to get done, done. So thank you. Any questions for Elizabeth? Yeah. We're running an operating uh, levy okay. in the election for the school. Can you tell me what they said there's been a change with how the lake property pays for it. Are you aware of that or when it changed? That's new to me. You know, there, I am going to say I'm going to get back to you on that because I, okay. I honestly, I could give an answer because I like I've heard about it, but I, I do. I do wastewater and annexation, right. so, but Thank one of my you. colleagues should know, so why don't I, I I'll, I'll write that down, I'll, I'll, I'll message uh, that over okay. to, to, um, right. to Don, so. Any other questions? What uh, wastewater or environmental issues are you watching right now? Um, boy, um, and, and I can apologize. This, I've been doing this for 10 years. This is the first time ever I have forgotten my paper packages. And <laughs> so I'm going to be mailing that to Don. He's going to be handing them out to you. We have a list of like 15 different things we worked on. Um, funding is going to be the biggest thing this year. And both increasing the amount of money and then we're looking at um, things like do we need to be increasing the caps and so forth. Um, a couple other things we're looking at is... Um, trying to, uh, some of it's on the regulatory side, trying to get more flexibility um, in terms of the ways that um, communities can comply with uh, their permits. What we're finding is, is that um, a lot of new limits are coming in place and that just simply upgrading the wastewater facilities is too expensive. So we're looking into trying to get a trading pilot going, um, looking at other ways of trying to make it less expensive for cities to deal with that. Um, and um, the... Uh, uh, we'll look at, you know, we'll be looking more closely at some other issues around standards on chloride, on uh, PFAS. Um, we will also be, we might be taking, we might be trying to make a push this year on the flushable wipes issue. A um, couple other issues that uh, 
um, we've got a, we're working on a host of things. Another thing that you know we've started talks. I don't know if we'll get anything done this year on it, but we're trying to look at the long term on funding for stormwater as well. That's one area that we're we're with all of the. I don't know if you guys have been is hit but with the big rains like much of the state has. I don't know if northern Minnesota's been getting it as bad as southern Minnesota, but stormwater is becoming a bigger problem for our communities, and funding isn't that great for it. So we're going to be looking more closely at that as well. Um, so sort of a combination of how can we make it easier for communities to address their needs plus how do we help them financially get done what they need to get done. Okay. Any other questions for Elizabeth? If not, thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to jump down to item number eight. We have uh, two gentlemen here to speak about the mobile bicycle repair shop that was implemented this summer here in Pelican Rapids. We have uh, Jeff McCracken and uh, Dan Holmgren. And uh, before you start, I want to congratulate Jeff, who was the 2019 Pelican Rapids Area Chamber of Commerce Pride Award winner this year. So congratulations, Jeff. Thank you very much, Brent. It's, it's a pleasure for Van and I to be here and talk a little bit about the bike program. It actually started a couple of years ago uh, when uh, Scott Richards Richardson talked to me, uh, he owns Pelican Rapids uh, Brake, and I walked in there visiting with him. He says, you know, I'm spending uh, good afternoons fixing bikes. <laughs> he says, you suppose the welcome place could help me out a little bit and do something about that? So it took time, but I, I talked to Van, and uh, Van talked to some others. We got Glenn Morkey and uh, a friend I met at... Uh, the multicultural meeting, Jim Jordan, who actually is a retired uh, builder who uh, works part-time at the Detroit Lakes bike shop. And so he's a pro repairman. And then we've got some amateurs here, and uh, Jim Jordan came and showed us how we stationed down behind Strand Hardware, and Matt was very nice to get a whole new supply of, of bike parts for us, which was helpful. However, we did have some pretty fancy bikes come in to fix, and we we were you know, thinking we were going to fix kids' bikes. And we ended up fixing all kinds of bikes. Fancy, you know, fancy, fancy bikes for hundreds and hundreds of dollars and, and little bikes. And we did fix a, over, uh, we started in April, but we got snowed out and rained out. And uh, some of those days, Matt was nice enough to let us in and we worked inside. We usually fixed about uh, six, seven bikes at a time. We fixed about 60 bikes over the period. Uh, some people brought their bikes to us, just leave them. And so we've given away a, about 18 bikes over the summer to those who needed them. Uh, some didn't have any, some we took in their wrecked bike. And uh, I, we're in the process now of, of throwing away bikes. We've got about uh, 12 to 15 good bikes left to start the year with. Uh, and then Mayor Brent has shared with us a, a workshop he went to where you should go where the kids are because that was the idea was to help kids and so next year we are going to go mobile and go to different corners of the city and uh, thanks to Lou and the and the Pelican Press the news got out there and so people knew where we were and so I think it'll work for us to uh, be about the city in, in uh, maybe like two or three other locations as well you want to say anything we're, we're good I just we're good I was just really impressed with all the uh, from the people that came. And Jim was very good. Jim was very good. And Jim's mind is thinking, you know, when the bike path goes through here, somebody's going to have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> His mind is always working. So, thank you very much. I applaud you, gentlemen, for your efforts and all the photos that help you. Van, I need you to come over here, please. Can I come over here, please? There's a television oh, camera there. They they gotta see the front of your shirt. Oh, yeah. right, right there, that's good. Just face the camera so the camera. Uh, so the people can see you. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. We'll go back up to item number seven, uh, community development authority. We have Amy Baldwin here with us this evening. We also have in our audience Commissioner Wayne Johnson. Commissioner? Oh, Amy, the floor is yours. <coughs> I 
Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. So again, my name is Amy Baldwin. I'm the Community Development Director with Otter Tail County and serve as the Executive Director for the newly formed uh, Otter Tail County Community Development Agency. And I'll start by just giving a little bit of background about the Community Development Agency, or CDA, as we refer to it as. Uh, for the last several years, Otter Tail County has been looking at how could they uh, further support growth and development throughout the county. And uh, ultimately, the county commissioners decided to convene a committee of public and private sector stakeholders from throughout the county that met for about six months back in 2018. And this committee provided a recommendation to the county as far as what that structure for additional support to growing the county could look like. And that uh, is actually a process that's defined within state statute of how counties look at that and evaluate uh, how to form um, additional uh, supports. So the Community Development Agency was established in 2018. And it is, uh, while it's part of Otter Tail County, it is a separate governing body within the county. It's uh, directed, its work is directed by a nine member uh, board, which was on the handout that uh, was just distributed to you that overviews those board members which represent a wide range of industry and geographies from throughout the county. And uh, the purpose of the CDA as it was established was to strengthen all of the 22, count 22 cities and 62 townships within Otter Tail County. The three areas of emphasis that the CDA looks at is expanding housing opportunities, promoting business development, and fostering the coordination of public and private partnerships. And uh, the work is intended to be complementary, additive, and supportive to those existing efforts that are happening locally. Uh, I've been on board since March, and in that time, I've been out meeting with different groups uh, within the county, uh, all throughout the large county. I've learned how large, indeed, Otter Tail County is. And uh, it's been great to learn more about the county and, and uh, the great communities and people that are uh, here trying to work every day to make it a better place for everyone uh, to live and work and visit. So I've been sharing with the CDA board what I've learned on those visits and meetings, and they've been using that uh, as, as well as uh, some additional data that's been researched about uh, how Otter Tail County compares to its peer counties within the state. So, you know, we know what we're doing. We know, you know, what's, what's happening here as far as changes in demographics, in our workforce, in our economic base, et cetera. But we wanted to see how are we comparing, uh, as we look back, compared to uh, those peer counties that were defined as um, Becker, Douglas, Candy Ojai, Crow Wing, and, and then also to use those as benchmarks as we go forward and help inform the work of the CDA and, and uh, look at where they need to shift their efforts as time goes forward. Where are we losing traction? Where do we need to have more focus on efforts? So they're looking at a, a you know, combination of data-driven uh, decisions and, and um, direction for its work, as well as uh, what we're hearing on the ground from communities about what supports they need, where is there an opportunity for partnership. Uh, certainly child care is one of those, and you know, we just heard from Elizabeth on um, how the coalition is supporting child care. And they have a, a partner organization called the Greater Minnesota Partnership, which uh, Pelican Rapids has been a member of. And I currently serve as vice pres president of that board. And we're really focusing on housing and child care as the two priorities in that economic development arm. Um, kind of offshoot of the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities. So I was going to mention the event uh, on Friday that's in Fergus Falls that Elizabeth mentioned. That's at 1 p.m. at West Central Initiative. And that's to help define and refine the legislative priorities around housing and housing supports and what that might look like. Looking at that, that business development infrastructure program that was mentioned by Elizabeth, that could there be a housing companion program like that to help support housing growth within the county and or throughout the state but hoping that we're here at the county um, position to potentially take advantage for of new programs as they come forward 
So while the, there was the three primary areas, uh, certainly housing has come up as a, a top priority for the CDA to grow throughout the county. And you saw that at the, the public hearing, several members of the CDA were here and speaking in support of the colony housing project in Pelican Rapids. And so they are paying attention and, and watching about how they can help support those projects that make sense um, and uh, can help grow that, uh, that critical need. So with that focus on housing,